Peace and greetings. <clears throat> I wanted to go over this uh, PCB design before the official PCB comes in for this NFC reader. Um, so it should be coming in a few days, any day now. Thank you to PCBWay for helping out with this project. And I'm very excited to share this. Let's turn it on. So I've shown some uh, videos um, showing what this does and <clears throat> I think uh, it could be very useful to some people and some people in the industry and really it's um, a super prototype um, to some bigger projects uh, that I hope to release. Uh, so what this does basically is it uses this PN532 module from NXP semiconductors and it scans uh, cards. So it scans uh, RFID and NFC cards and <clears throat> it can also erase and write to cards, uh, tags you might have. It can even act um, as a card as well. But we'll go into that uh, later. So the basis of this device, the brain, is this uh, ESP32 C3 Super Mini. And um, you can get the original version from Seed Studio. It's the Zal series, but this is a clone. And um, the beauty of this is that it has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So there's a lot of different um, ways this can go. Um, in a lot of the um, NFC or credit card swiping machines that you see, um, it's just a fancy machine that's um, covering this black chip right here. Um, anything you see, there's no magic that's going on. Um, there's no voodoo. It all comes down to um, this black chip right here. And there's a lot of levels to um, the chips that NXP um, offers. Obviously, this isn't the exact same one um, in the ATM machine. However, I do have a uh, improved module. Um, these are from Electo House um, in China. Um, but there is a PN7160, which is a chip they use, or something similar in the uh, NFC scanners, um, those point of sale systems, those uh, credit card scanners that they use. And I also have my own module um, being made as well um, that uses that chip. It's actually, PCB is ready. Um, I'm just waiting to have it assembled. Um, need to get some uh, more money for that. Um, but for right now, um, this is what we're working with. Um, so it has uh, three uh, different buttons, and uh, these will be for uh, the menu. Um, and I'm still finishing up the script, um, but there'll be a few functions for read, write, erase, um, dump, all that. And it all fits on a uh, board just about this size, um, the final PCB will be a little bit bigger um, because I, I didn't want there to be any overhang like there is now. And um, it will all be uh, vertical. So I believe the screen's gonna be right here, um, then the buttons, and then the ESP. And then on the back, um, you'll solder on the uh, NFC chip last. Because it all would be um, very clean. And then um, here right now, you can't see. Um, 
the, all the wires and stuff around the back. <laughs> but I put uh, electrical tape just to keep it um, kind of nice and neat and not mess up the uh, wires. Um, and then for the screen, this is a SSD 1306, um, 128 by 64 pixels, 0.96 inches, the yellow blue screen. Um, and you have to be very wary too about these ones. Um, let's see if I can show you, perfect. But there's two uh, different setups for these screens. Um, and this could really screw you over on your PCB if you don't watch out, but there's one that has ground uh, VCC, and then there's one <clears throat> that has VCC ground. And this will fry your uh, screen if you don't watch where the pins are at. And it's kind of annoying because I think uh, the ground VCC is way more popular. Um, and I believe maybe these are a newer version. Um, so, but it's harder to find these listings. Um, but you will, once again, like I said, if you have <coughs> the ground and the power and the power and the ground, you will fry your screen. But it's only like a dollar. So, um, not the end of the world. But yeah, that's basically the overall um, design. And I also do have um, another version that has this uh, RC522, because I wanted I wanted there to be two different versions. Um, this is the Cypher box, by the way, this is not yet ready, um, but I'm gonna have another version. So, um, you know, there's gonna be a few different versions, because um, some people might just need the RC522, and that's more so for um, these basic cards. Uh, like, let's say, gym cards, dorm cards, hotel keys, um, you know, arcade cards. That's what the RC522 handles. Um, so that would be a cheaper version. <clears throat> Now, when you go to uh, this one, this now um, involves NFC and RFID. However, there's only so much with the NFC you can do. I believe this does NFC, <clears throat> NFC type one and two. So um, I think that involves basic read, write, and some other things. Um, but it can also do all of the MyFair 1 to 4K and um, a few, you know, quite a lot of the ISO ones. However, it does become uh, limited, which is why there's the PN7150, which is the, 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 a newer one. Um, and you could find that more circulated in the market. Um, however, according to Electo House's site, which I don't believe anyone ever goes to, um, they did release the PN7160, which can do, um, all tags, I mean, all RFID, Felicia, and then do all tags, uh, one through four, which means it allows for, um, host emulation. And they call it NFC uh, host emulation or NFC card emulation. So I think um, the host emulation is you can emulate a reader. And then card emulation, uh, obviously, you can emulate um, NFC tag for, I believe. I am not sure. I'm going to have to test that. I do have uh, them coming on the way. Um, so the next level would be, because I'm still researching... NXP's, um, NXP semiconductors, uh, NFC chips, and uh, they do have quite a lot. You know, they have so many models, 
and there's only so many of these boards, you know. Um, only these two are easily available on Amazon. Um, and Electo's houses only go up to PN 7160. So it'd be interesting to see um, what other chips there are. And, um, you know, like with this one, I, there's really no reason to recreate it. Um, but why I made my own uh, PN7160 module is because this uses, you have to use their antenna. Um, and that's kind of uh, what really sucks is that they take advantage of the fact that 99% um, of the people don't know antenna design or, um, you know, antenna engineering. So <clears throat> you probably don't know that this antenna in here is crap. And I, I don't think a lot of people know all the different capabilities you could do just from switching your antenna up uh, as far as the distance you get, um, the accuracy. If you have different use cases, like let's say you wanted to, um, you know, have this behind maybe a metal surface or, you know, four inches away from the target of their customer or something. So that's just where these kind of hit a wall, you know, um, and there's no way, even though I, I'm making prototypes with these, um, you know, like it's silly. Like this is a chip, like really, oops. really the module should only have been this size, right? But because of this whole extra uh, PCB antenna, um, kind of lose a lot of space, you know? So hopefully my new module um, will allow me to uh, just have more flexibility. And I kind of want to put a lot, I want to try and somehow make a partnership to put a lot of those new modules into the market, but you know, that's later on. Um, so yeah, hope you enjoyed this um, PCB design uh, talk and maybe help you out with um, designing your your own. You know, this is a, this is pretty uh, straightforward. Um, you know, I just, uh, you know, pieced everything together and um, you could, I'll put a link down where you could find all these uh, products and um, you could piece it all together. And eventually uh, the code will be up on GitHub. I do have just a basic uh, version for this right now on GitHub, but I'm going to put up uh, the full firmware um, because I've only found one other project that kind of is going for the full version of what these chips are capable for, and then that will translate into um, the advanced version. Um, because the, why I had to make my own module is that... Uh, the PN7160 is $21, um, <clears throat> not including shipping. I think shipping is like something outrageous, like $14. I pay like $14 for shipping. Um, so it's just, it's um, it would be literally impossible <clears throat> um, to go into uh, production um, or even develop, like, you know, if I had a team and what if, you know, what if we needed to make 10 different prototypes? You know, that's two hundred dollars on just the NFC chip. It's kind of, uh, it's kind of bogus. Um, so I wanted to um, get my own uh, going, um, <clears throat> and hopefully that just brings down the cost. I really don't know how much the assembly is for each chip, but you know, it's like a two inch, two by two inch chip. You know. Um, so I'd imagine it'd be maybe $3. I'm happy paying up to five a board, which is way better than, um, you know, I probably imagine it'd be like three, maybe two to three dollars, you know, maybe even a dollar a board as, as what I'm trying to go for. But it's way better than um, $21 a board that's not even going to be um, for production. You know, it's kind of 
way too much. So that's just, you know, ways that you can find workarounds. Um, I, I feel like some people get too locked down with what China has to offer and they think that's it. But, <clears throat> you know, if you find the right people, you can kind of just create your own uh, version and um, pay something uh, much cheaper and just have your own version. You know, like China is nothing magical. You know, you find the schematics for the chip, you get a board built, move on. Um, so yeah, I hope you found this uh, helpful. And um, I don't really need to make a video for this RC522. It's kind of the same premise. Um, just replace uh, the board and you're good to go.